Okay, this is a revisit to one of my old systems I've fitted quite recently. The customer was saying it wasn't flushing properly. So, the way around that is to shorten the standpipe, not by too much. So it sort of stays in between the external overflow. Well, the external overflow comes first, but also, if this float valve is to fail altogether, the system will be able to flush itself and the overflow. I'm surprised it wasn't allowed according to the water regs, but yeah. So you see, I still drips, and that's sort of on the mark here. This here is the piece of standpipe I cut off. I inserted my battery powered hanger grinder from here, and I worked on from here. And the grinder's outside, so I'll show it shortly. So now, if I was to flush this in a way a user who is unfamiliar to this type of system would, it should go on the first go without a problem, I guess. So if I was to flush this now, it would have a problem let go, the weight of the valve should drop down and it should flush on the first go with no problem. Are you serious? Okay, so it still doesn't flush under the weight of the bell siphon, so we're going to have to minimise the length, the height of the standpipe now. It's a bit of an overkill operation, but that seems it's what we have to do. As you can see, the standpipe is going to lay it by another centimetre, over two centimetres. This is as low as you can go. Let's see how the part of the standpipe locked off. And as you can see, this is literally the minimum you can sort of get to that point. Just adjusting the water a little bit. So let's put the bell siphon back in. Now let's give it another go. Will it flush under the weight of its own bell? Thanks for watching.